welcome on my network welcome to the channel please click subscribe 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 and yeah guys thank you so much comment like subscribe comment and like and then subscribe yeah boo and then yeah guys please just do that let's help the channel grow and yeah i love everyone's interaction thank you so much guys i will say this again 96 percent of you are watching like mm, this looks nice but you don't subscribe 96 percent of you are looking at like mm, this looks very nice and then you don't even like come on guys join the party baba join the party new age okay anyway let's get to it today's topic is the preview of the amazulu game the preview of the amazulu game and what will happen if umili fenziki loses let's kick it off with umili fenziki if Umuli Fenseke gets beaten by a team that has not scored even one goal in the entire season, what is what is what more would management need to see before they realize that Unziki was the wrong high? Because at this point, if they leave Unziki to continue with these bad results, are they going to realize it when now it's after 10 games and we maybe have like two wins and like maybe three draws uh, and like five lo five losses? Is that what they are waiting for? Because if they are waiting for that, then you might as well just, we might as well just accept Guti. We are a team that is going to be fighting to get into top eight because our team is not ambitious. And it's a very criminal act. It is not a right Guti, a team of our caliber. I'm not even talking case achieves the brand, etc. I'm saying the quality, the facilities, the training grounds, the, the, the lifestyle, the money, the everything. How is it possible that a team like that will struggle against other teams? If you guys want to know reality, there are players in Pulukwane City still earning 15k. There are players in Chipa United still earning about 20k. There are players in Ama Aero still earning maybe like 30k compared to Chiefs where majority of the players besides Abom do the young ones or above like 80k to 100k they are above that so if you guys want there is context good Chiefs you get there you earn the real money a lot of our players are sitting on 100k salaries that is just standard because you play for Kaiser Chiefs so you can't be beaten by people among 15k and stuff like that. Because if you are earning 100, it means you are the best. And that is what we see internationally. Muli Fenzeke, you, this one is a crunch match. If you lose this match, the question I'll ask, which I've been asking towards the beginning of the season. If you can't beat Chipa United, if you can't beat TS Galaxy, if you can't beat Amazulu, then who are you planning to beat? Because... Any time we have versed these teams in our history, I have never looked at these teams and said they're going to beat us. Yes, they have beaten us in the past like TS Galaxy, but they shouldn't. And they, it, we, we just, we, it can't happen. So, Mulifan Tzeki, if you lose this game, I hope they fire you. That is just my, my, my final call on it. Look, you can't go around losing five games in a league. Like, it's, it's not acceptable. I don't care who says what. With the kind of team you have, rather put others one in and oh, I know. You know what? I don't know what is the solution. All I know is that the people that are on the bench are not the solution. But anyway, let's kick it to the preview of the game. Preview of the game, we're playing Amazulu. They haven't scored any goals and the, and they haven't considered any goals. Meaning good defensively, they're good, but in attack they are a bit blunt. They don't have enough strikers or whatever the case may be. I have looked at the Amazulu squad and I'm like, hmm, they don't really have players, but they have players who like scoring against Chiefs, which we always know there are players like like about Dion, uh, is it Dion or whatever? This is a player who was linked to Chiefs at some point. Those are the kind of players who just some for whatever reason, they managed to score against us. I don't know what the reason is, but I feel tomorrow is a must win. The loss against TS Galaxy is still so bad. It's a bad, left a bad taste in all of our mouths. And I don't believe Omuli Fenziki can lose his first game at FNP Stadium. Oh, never, my daughter. Oh, oh I can't. If you can, I no. I don't even think about a loss. But yeah, preview. Who will start? 
there's been rumors in the media that uh, Molife Nsiki wants to try Itumelenkun. Look, I don't know. I don't know if that's the right decision because me personally, I don't think Peterson has been doing bad. He has actually saved us more than we actually want to know. Um, uh, Peterson has saved us. Like there's been two against his Galaxy and against Sundowns. Those are games we could have lost four to six nil. But because Ukune uh, Peterson was doing his saves, we won. But then it happened. It happened. Because like guys, it, it, this is what how I always view it. I'm like, if your keeper is facing all those chances one on one, expect that he will either make a mistake or their one goal will just go in, and that is just the reality. If you allow a team to have that much space in your box, etc., etc., because it's like, uh, if you can have the best keeper who saves penalties in the world, do you think that keeper will save all the penalties? He can be a keeper known to save twenty penalties in a row. But on a day, you will just concede five. And then you'll be like, ah, this guy is useless. No, he's not useless. What do you expect? Now, people are also training there to score goals. So, Peterson, I feel they may play safe with Peterson. But what is the goodness of playing Ukune? Ukune, the goodness of playing Ukune, he talks to a defense yake a lot. And I feel like a communication is lacking. Uh, from Abo Peterson, because that's one thing, oh, Brian Baloy, Kune, Fernandez, that's one thing they always had. They always used to talk a lot to their defense to warn them of, of things and distribution. If we like playing the long ball, all those chances that Peterson had where he got, he, they shot the ball and he caught it, that was Kune's daily bread. He used to just distribute and we were already on a counter goal. So that is the positive about Kune. But if you want to play it safe, just play Peterson because he hasn't really done anything to say he's a bad keeper. The only real mistakes he made is the Sundowns game, in my opinion. The TS Galaxy one is not a mistake. It's just unfortunate. And then left back, if they said uh, Dove is starting to train, I don't know if he'll be healthy because... Uh, pulling a thigh muscle is one of those things that you can't force. But the nice thing is that we're playing at FNP Stadium, so the pitch is often good. So if you will, if there's a place to play your player, it's often FNP Stadium because you won't have a bad pitch. So maybe Dove will play, but I don't think so. I think Clanty will still play. Center back, obviously, Klokwe Simango, they're still trying to connect those combinations they didn't have a good game against TSK their first bad game together right back Frostler one thing I'll say about Frostler we've been praising praising Frostler so much and saying Frostler is our best player Frostler is our best player but we have not asked ourselves this question and this is the same question Kevin Hunt always asks play, um, uh, people when they say if a keeper wins a man of the match what does that mean that means Guti your team was useless and you got saved by the keeper because the keeper kept saving, 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 saving. So that's the same. If Frostler is our best player on the pitch, it and he's not even a best player because he's creating a sister, every, everything. No, he's our best player because he keeps stopping attacks on the right. It means that he doesn't have support and it means that eventually someone will get past him. And that was what happened at TS Galax. So we can't be praising nonsense. Oh, Frostler, something is wrong on the right side. They must fix it. Um, he, as good as he is, his right side is a problem there. And that's the side that Matt often plays in. And that's my problem. It's time for Sitebe to get a chance. So I'll get to defensive midfielders. It is time. It is time to give Sitebe a chance. That is my opinion. It's time to give Usitebe a chance. Give the boy a chance. Oh, Matt, we've seen what he can do. And at TS Galaxy, he was very useless. Give Usitebe a chance with Castillo. Okay, left side of midfield. Look, Kigan Doyle is still injured, etc. So, I don't know. My This is just the feeling I have. A feeling I have. Anyone can say I'm wrong or whatever. Me, personally... I feel like this is a game I would like to give Umtu Shabalala a chance on the left. I would like Umtu to start on the left hand side and keep Modi on the bench. 
This is just my opinion. I love how good Modi is, but I don't want to put the pressure on him. I want him to start on the bench, come in as a substitution. Modi on the bench is a, is a good substitution to have come into the game. If we're winning 2-0, imagine how good it will be for Modi to come in with no pressure. So I would like Modi to start on the bench personally and start Umtu Shabalala, but chances are he will start the game. Okay. And then uh, number 10. Number 10, leave Umtu Mdanzani. Umtu Mdanzani, leave him there. He's been doing well. He's, he just needs players to play around him. So I would play, uh, me personally, I would still play Umtu Mdanzani. Uh, on the right, I would give Upozane another chance. I would give Upozane another chance. A lot of people are like, why you give Upozane another chance? I'll say this again. Upozane may not be the most, like, decisive player, may not be the best player in situations, etc., etc. But, look, he has an energy that helps us play, helps us create chances, helps make movement in the box. And when Dupree is also playing in that game, the, the defenders don't know who to mark. And that makes it, that gives O Dupree some time to breathe. So I would play Upozane on the right. Unless, unless, and here's where it gets interesting. Unless O Hassan there is going, he's going to play. If they are going to put O Hassan in the starting lineup, then I'll tell you what my lineup will be. But let's say for now he's not there. Upozane. Striker, Dupree. Ranga is out, Dupree, striker. Finish and clear. Uh, Dupree, striker. That's how it's going to be. Sharp. Now, if Uhasuan is actually going to play, this is how I would play my team. I would play... Uh, I would play Umtu Shabalala actually on the right hand side of uh, attack. Uh, and then I would play uh, Ashley Dupree on the left. And then I would play Uhasond on the in the middle, and then I would play Um Tanzane in the from the middle. Why do I say this? They are all creative players. Okay, we don't know how creative Uhasan is, but from what the videos I saw, he doesn't just chill like about Ranga in one position. He likes running around, moving around. So they are all creative players, they're all fast. What does that mean? We saw from last season, Utupri would always come back. When we're defending, Umtu Shabalala would always come back when we're defending. Meaning with the covering space, we covered. And then when we attack, we have Umtu, we have Dupri, we have Hassan, and then we have Umtu Mdanzani coming from the middle. And then maybe then we have Sitebe uh, as a proper number six, and then Ukastilo or Freedom to join the attack. That is what I would play if it was my team. That's what I would do. But... I actually was watching another YouTube video. I can't recall which YouTube video it was. And it said, the downfall of cheese has been the fact that we have not been buying players. And the thing they said is, imagine if we bought the following three players as Kaiser Chiefs. Imagine, oh, not three, two players. Imagine Chiefs bought the, just took money out of the bank and bought the following two players in preseason. They bought uh, Reyna's, and then they bought Ukani Samayu. Meaning that you would have Reynas in the middle as a striker. You would have Dupree on the left. And then you would have Ukani Samayu on the right. And then Mdundanzane, etc. It is nice to dream sometimes. It's nice to dream. But yay, I feel that that would be a team and a half. But at the end of the day, I'll still say this. We can have all the strikers in the world, but we still need to fix our defensive midfielder. So, Castillo is not enough. We still need to fix it. The fact that Ichi's management went and tried to get Utabo Tele tells you that they also know that we're not ready. We're not ready. We're not ready. We're not ready. So, that is my, my, my take on the game. We're not ready. When I say we're not ready, I mean in the midfield with Utabo Tele. Meaning what they know what we're lacking there. So I hope they're still searching for a player. Uh, the, the window is closing sometime in, in September. I feel like we've played enough games to know. Let's take out 5 million and go buy another quality DM if possible. If possible. Because one thing I'll say is said we're not producing 
quality DMs in our um, DTC. I think the last quality defensive midfielder we, we created was Umeyu, Wise Man Meyua. And yeah, you know his situation, the unfortunate one. If Wiseman Meyua still achieves, I think like we wouldn't be complaining as much. But yeah, that is the things we have to deal with. But anyway, guys, subscribe. It's the weekend. It's the weekend. Guzabam Nandi and Amazulu, we're coming for you. We got beaten by Amandebele, but Shaka Zulu's kids, no ways. You guys can have Shaka Ilembe, but I'm at three points. It's our third. It three points. Yes, it changes. We'll Subscribe.